In this video, we are going to test our drag and drop functionality by mocking some data into our inventory system as well as we are going to fix our functionality with scrolling inventory content since uh, in our current setup we had an issue where we had the pointer on top of the item inside the inventory we couldn't scroll. Okay, let's get going. In the previous video we have implemented this draggable item now let's test if we can actually swap this item against another hard-coded item in our inventory before we start coding our inventory model that will be behind this UI. Okay, so for now what I want to do is open up our scripts folder and go to the inventory controller or actually I think we need to go to our uh, UI and inventory uh, UI inventory page since we have already coded some uh, data here. So let's open this script up. Okay, now to quickly test our logic, I have created those public fields inside our UI inventory panel, but basic idea will be that all of those events that we have assigned to will need to be called uh, or rather transferred back to our inventory controller. So what we will need to do is push those events by creating another set of events here inside our UI inventory page and send them or rather uh, enable other scripts so uh, for us it will be our inventory controller to be able to assign to them just like we are assigning to them inside our initialized inventory UI. This will be a bit more work that's why we are going to stick with testing our logic here inside our UI inventory page but later on we are going to delete all this code so for now what I want to do is have another image so let me call it image 2 and with this uh, image too, we can now add the second item to our inventory. So let's slide it down to find our show method. Let's duplicate this list of UI items zero uh, access uh, uh, code. And we are going to access the element uh, one. And we are going to set the data to be image two simply and qual quantity will be the same. So now we should have two items in our inventory and both of them will be enabled. The meaning that we are going to get the handle swap logic, handle and drag and so and handle a begin drag so we are getting the inventory item uh, ui inventory item object reference here in our inside our handle begin drag now to make this logic work we need to save the reference to our ui inventory item uh, or to its index and when we call handle swap which is called when we drop an item on another item we need to know which with which item should we swap the item that we have dropped our dragged item on so basically we need to have the index of this item that was dropped uh, on and we need to have the item that was dragged that we are dragging using our mouse so to do that we need to go up and we are going to store one private variable here which is private int currently dragged item index we are going to set it to be minus one since if this is minus one this means that it is outside of the bounds of our list this means that we are not dragging any item great now let's slide down and let's find our handle show item actions let's change the obj so let's select it you can click ctrl f in visual studio to open the find menu and if you extend this arrow you can replace this so i'm going to type here inventory item ui and i want to replace all the obj string values with this inventory item ui i'm going to select uh, these uh, match cases so i want this only to, to be case sensitive in case you have any other variable called obj and i want to select this option and replace all and now all the objects so five occurrences were replaced with this new name so now all my uh, met method handlers or event handlers have this name instead of this obj okay so this will be much more clear what we are going to do so in the handle item selection we do not need to do anything but in the handle begin drag what we want to do is add some logic before we actually make our mouse follower be toggled true and we set the data we want to get the int index equals our list of ui items index of our uh, reference that we have passed here as the argument now this will be either the index or it will return minus one so if there is no reference to this object in our list uh, which should probably never happen but best to check if we have no uh, this index in on this list then we can assume that this is the current uh, currently dragged item equals this index and this way we can access our inventory the model 
and basically get the reference to this index or to the item on this index on the list of items inside our inventory model and fill in the data. Right now we are filling it using our default data. But basically right now what we want to do is change the image depending on the index. So if index equals zero, we are going to add question mark. So this is ternary operator. We basically asking if index is zero, then we want to return image. Else, so the colon, we are going to call uh, take image two since other items are simply empty. So now we are correctly setting the data of the mouse follower. But the most important thing is that we have this currently dragged item index. Now what we can do is in the handle swap, we can basically do the same. We need to get the index of the, uh, this uh, reference uh, UI inventory item object. If this index is on our list, then we can proceed with swapping. But if it is not, we need to not only return, but we need to toggle our mouse follower toggle to false. And we also need to reset our currently dragged item to be minus one, since basically we want to reset all the logic that we have triggered so far. Because if we are swapping with the uh, item that does not exist in our list, this means that there is some issue here. Probably we should throw an error, but basically this is how we can handle it and simply reset the inventory so that nothing is being dragged. Anyhow, if the index is greater than zero, we can simply ask our UI, uh, or rather we can type list of UI items, we can ask for the currently dragged item index. And what we can do is set the data. For now, we are going to simply check again if the index is equal to zero then we are going to again use ternary operator we need to ask uh, or we need to set rather the image so the image from the first item also the colon we are going to set the image to and we are going to set the quantity as it was now we need to do the same basically for our index now again this is the temporary code index and we know that for the index, we need to basically check the same. If index is zero, we need to return image zero. If uh, index is greater than zero, uh, we need to select the second image. Okay, and of course we need to again disable our mouse uh, follower. So we need to toggle it false and we need to reset our currently dragged item. For now, we should be able to test our logic. Now, of course, if we uh, handle and drag is called, we are calling mouse follower toggle false. So we are disabling uh, the item anyhow. Okay, with this done, let's save this logic. Let's go back to Unity. And to test our logic, let's select our canvas. We need to find our in-game menu inventory. And we will need to select our script. So our custom UI inventory page. Let's select the image too. And first one was called generic RPG, so let's type generic. Uh, and we should find generic um, loot. And we have something else, so for example, the shield. Now, if we press play, we should see two item, uh, items popping up in our inventory. Okay, and we can drag our sword, and it was swapped by, uh, with the shield. Now, I think that I've missed something in the logic, so let me go back to my script. So, uh, I think I, instead of index, I should use currently dragged item in the second set data call. Okay, let's test it again. Okay, I have restarted it. Let me drag the sword. Now, this will not work uh, the second time. What we can do is simply open the inventory again. And as you can see, we can swap them once. But basically, this means that our logic works. But we have one issue. So what we can do is select our player. Let's give it the inventory controller. Let's give it a size of 30. Let's press play and let's see if we can fill in the inventory so it has the scroll bar. Okay, now you can scroll when we, uh, you are on this white background. But if, we, if you try scrolling when you are on this item, you will see that we cannot really scroll. What is going on? Well, the problem is that when we have implemented our on drag on drop it uh, logic for our item so let's go to our prefabs ui uh, inventory ui uh, item ui and we have used this event trigger component and we have assigned to it some methods that we had in our ui inventory item and we haven't added any other uh, events that could possibly uh, prevent uh, other functionalities like this scroll event but the issue is 
that if we take a look at the documentation, uh, well, event trigger is very easy to use and exposes the, all the events for us to assign anything that we want to them. Note that attaching the uh, an event to the triggered component to game object will make the object intercept all events. And basically what happens in our game is that one of those events is the scroll event and our items are intercepting those events. Now I have already shown you a slightly different documentation for the event systems where I have told you that we can use what are uh, the interfaces like I drag handler, I drop handler, I end drag handler and so on to implement the same functionality through the code which is a bit less visible but also a valid solution. So let's go back to Unity and let's try the second approach. So I'm going to select my uh, item UI in the prefab uh, window and I'm going to remove this event trigger from our prefab. Instead, we need to open our UI inventory item script. So let's click those three dots and edit the script. Okay, sorry about all the changes, but this is something also that I want to talk about. So using this, those interfaces should be easy, right? What we need is actually, let's take a look at our own events. We need on item click handler, on item drop handler, on item begin drag handler, and on item end handler. So what we can do is simply add I pointer. And since we have this using Unity engine dot event system, we have those, uh, this IntelliSense IntelliSense in Visual Studio showing us the possible uh, interfaces. I pointer click handler, that's what we need. Uh, let's add another one. I drag. We want to detect basically the begin drag and the end drag. So let's add I begin drag handler and I end drag handler. And what else did we have? On item click, on item drop. And so we need to have the I drop handler. So those are the events. And what we need to do is right click on them, quick actions and implement the interface. So you can select this and click alt tab. And you can see that this quick menu already shows you the action. So we can click enter again, select the second one and implement interface, implement the interface. And again, this would be clear enough that we only want to intercept those events, nothing more. But again, if we take a look at the documentation interface, I begin drag handler interface to implement uh, if you wish to receive uh, on begin drag callbacks. Note, you need to implement I drag handler in addition to I begin drag handler for it basically to work. So this seems pretty strange that you can implement those I begin drag and I end drag interfaces and you need to know that you need to also uh, implement I drag handler. And of course, the problem is with this that we do not need this. We do not want this uh, on drag. We basically will have the empty function here just for the sake of having the empty function just for it to work. Anyhow, that's how Unity works. That's why I wanted to use this uh, event trigger. Sorry about that. That didn't uh, it that it didn't work out. So we need to have all those interfaces, and we need to basically. Uh, what we need to do is when we had this on begin drag method, our custom method, we need to now cut this code and delete this on begin drag and we need to uh, slide down and find on begin drag event and paste the code here from our previous method. Let's slide up and let's find on end drag. Let's control X to cut this. Let's delete this method and let's slide it down and on uh, end drag. Let's paste this code here. Let's find our on pointer click. Let's cut this code out. Let's delete this method. And we are going to find this on pointer click, paste this method. And we are not going to receive data. Right now, our event data is the pointer data. So, what we can do is basically this uh, passes us the, directly the pointer event data. So, we can rename this to be pointer data and delete this pointer data conversion. Now, everything should work uh, as it did before. And I think we had one more on drop. We can uh, cut this code, delete this method, and let's find our on drop event and let's paste it here. And basically, this is how you would uh, create this logic using those interfaces. Now we can save this code. Let's go back to Unity. Now, the great thing is that we have used our own events, so nothing really changes outside of this class, and that's what maintainable code should do. So now we should be able to press play and we should be able to still see our functionality for swapping those items work. 
as well as we should be able to now scroll up and down despite the fact that we are uh, having the pointer on top of our items so now in the next video we are going to remove this old logic and we are going to start transitioning to creating this model view controller pattern when we are going to send all the events from our ui directly to the inventory controller and the inventory controller will have to deal with what happens based on the uh, inventory data model that we are going to also start creating now if you want to learn more about making 2d games in unity as well as to improve your coding skills and to learn how to write maintainable code check out my video courses the link will be in the description of this video see you in the next video